Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded feedback event for the June 2015 examination for the BTEC Next Generation Art and Design Level 2. And this is specifically for Unit 2, Creative Project in Art and Design. To help you get the most out of this feedback, you should have the following documents handy, as we will refer to them during the session. This includes the question paper, issued back in January 2015 and used for this year's externally set assessment, which is referred to throughout this presentation. You should have the unit specification, which will give you the structure, content and additional guidance to help you deliver your course successfully. The mark scheme is essential for you to be able to assess your learner's work accurately, using the correct criteria and against the national standards. The Lead Examiner's Report Although this presentation is largely based on the Lead Examiner's Report, there is additional visual material and supporting comment. The report itself will give you helpful feedback about this year's entry and outcomes. During this training event, we aim for you to consider the following points. Receive feedback on national performance of candidates of the June 2015 examination series. Consider the ways in which candidates responded to the questions, how they used their preparation time and how they answered the questions. Expand on aspects of the examiner's report. Consider delivery strategies and share good practice. Identify, highlight and address common issues. Find out about further support available. It's important that teachers are familiar with the specification and that learners get the opportunity to read through the whole exam paper themselves and have flexibility regarding the question they choose to answer. This choice should be informed by the specialist skills and pathway experience they have had on your course. This external assessment is effectively a creative brief, and each of the questions includes a list of client expectations. By the time they get to take the externally set unit, learners should understand what these expectations mean and how they will impact on their work. I'd like to show you some student work. 2D design produced in response to the Wild Wood theme. What you'll see is some effective idea development, contextual information with relevant notes, some practical photography, ideas being explored and evaluated as they develop, and some very interesting and engaging outcomes as the student gets to the end of the process. The outcome isn't a great piece of work, although, the idea of combining photographic cutouts and realistic trees and branches is certainly the student's own. And although we are not seeing all of the sketchbook pages by any means here, the learner has worked fairly well to get to this point. The moderated mark was just, but only just, into the merit band. Here's a better view of that final outcome. You might wish to look at the assessment grids to help recognise how the evidence meets the requirements at the relevant level. In this example, we are seeing a rather more mature response to an exam question. It's the metamorphosis question, which turned out to be the most popular choice of question by far this year. As is referred to in the examiner's report, the popularity of any particular question is driven by several factors. One such factor is that most centres still run their BTEC programme using very similar briefs and topics to established GCSE courses, almost always in a visual arts context. This then means that when the exam comes round, learners have not always had enough experience in the design pathways to choose anything other than visual arts. Hence the plethora of metamorphosis interpretations we have seen this year. Many of the responses seen have been simplistic, literal and naive. Some moderators have said they never want to see another butterfly again. But in this instance, the student has chosen to investigate metamorphosis, change, evolution, variation in architecture. 
As lead examiner, I didn't anticipate that sort of response. So it's a pleasure to see the questions stimulating a response in such an innovative direction. Let's look at some more of the sketchbook. Here you can see, although you might not be able to read it all, some of the notes and research this student produced from the start of their 20 hours preparation time. The student has photographed lots of examples of architecture from different periods, styles, details like those wrought iron pieces on the top right, carvings, columns, a really wide ranging search for inspiration and information. We are also given some technical detail about the photos. There is page after page of this in the sketchbook. We'd love to show the whole set of work to you, but there are just too many pages in the sketchbook. So here's a further sample from the research stage, looking at secondary sources and artists' work. In this case, it is the Futurists and Kandinsky whose work the learner has made a powerful connection with. He goes on to explore Bauhaus and constructivism too. There are many pages of transcription of sections, tracings and mappings using the student's own photos and drawings, so we'll look at some of those in the next few slides. So, here we see more pages from the sketchbook. Lots of notes, little bits of media testing around the edges. Quite well laid out. Titles aren't in giant bubble writing, thank goodness. Although in this centre's art department, it would simply not be allowed, as this is discouraged very early on in the school, and so never seen again. The student is researching quite widely, so we might wonder where it's all going to fall into place, especially when he goes on to look at a festival of illustration. But it turns out to be yet more stimulus. And there's some more media work here. All in all, a very productive and focused student who brings all the various ideas together in his own way. And here we see the emerging final idea on the right of the screen. There are elements from the architectural research, from looking at artists and movements, and even some ideas inspired by pieces of work seen at the Festival of Illustration. We had a glimpse of what ends up as the final outcome earlier, but here we'll see it again. It's a design for a mural, designed as per the brief, to be shown in situ and to scale. That is something else that emerged in the lead examiner's report, which was that students simply did not follow the brief. They took part of the idea and developed imagery around the theme, but not always to satisfy client requirements, and this came up again and again. Learners had not been taught, it seemed, to actually consider client requirements and the constraints or demands of a brief, even though every question on the exam paper is couched in those terms. One reason for this disparity turned out to be that in many centres the teachers did not actually issue the whole paper to their students, but simply pre-selected for them which question they would do, often using identical handouts and resources for each learner. No wonder then that it proved difficult to find much evidence above level 1 and the level 1 pass threshold in some cohorts. Centres at times tended to over-reward candidates for skill levels and competences that they had not met. This is due to the lack of meaningful time planning shown by the candidates, a minimum level of reflection and limited experimentation with techniques. The report states that over-lenient assessment tended to reward any activity that vaguely meets the theme and perceived as being a successful piece of vocational, design-based or applied art and design even where there is little sense of the learner working within the parameters and constraints of the brief. And here we can see some more of the sketchbook pages that inform the final work, and on the right hand side of the screen a painted version of the final design for the mural itself. It is important to keep the assessment criteria firmly in mind at this point, and you could have a look at those while these slides are running. The next slide shows the learner's final work in situ, 
as specified in the original exam question. Whilst this may not be the best building to position the mural on, it is, however, an attempt to show the finished idea to scale and in situ, and again, it could have been a better photo, maybe a subtler use of image manipulation software. We can all ask for more, and for what isn't there, but this learner has made a mature, sustained and considered effort all the way through, fulfilled the brief in every detail, and has explored so much along the way. The learner has worked through a range of primary and secondary research, all carefully recorded and reported. This learner scored very highly, and both the centre and the visiting moderator agreed a mark which placed this high in the distinction band. In fact, this was one of a number of submissions seen this year where a mark of 30 out of 30 was agreed. Because the concepts assessed in this unit are those which other units share, the teaching of them underpins this whole BTEC qualification. If these concepts are taught across the whole course, then the skills and strategies learnt will enable timed test success and will prove to be transferable. I'd like to show you one more high-scoring piece of work, which is shown on a larger scale on the next slide. It's the culture question and the fashion pathway. In this instance, I am only showing the final piece. In this single slide, we see the end result of the student's efforts. She has researched punk culture, produced a terrific sketchbook full of ideas, references, personal comment and appraisals, designed and made fashion garments, painted the backdrop wall, organised models, did the photo shoot, then assembled images in a page layout. The resulting page, inserted into a copy of Vogue, quite fooled everyone that saw it into believing it was part of the publication. This is a full, complete and sophisticated response to the brief. Very successful for the student, great for assessment evidence and a very convincing example of how the vocational pathways can be both understood and articulated even where fashion design is not taught full-time as a pure discipline in the department. The next slide shows it close up. For a culture that had its heyday in the mid-1970s, this student has done the necessary research, primary and secondary, caught the essence, embarked on a range of successful practical activities, and given it a convincing and contemporary airing in the pages of a magazine, just as the brief asked. Not all work is as good as this, and we should have a look at some work that actually caused rather more contentious debate, and that is work at the level 1, level 2 pass boundary. It's a bit of a list, but well worth considering these bullet points summarising what moderators said about candidates who did less well this year. So, let's consider why some students did less well. There are lots of reasons why candidates don't do well, or as well as they might, but the main reasons that emerged this year certainly include the following factors. Some students did not get to see the whole exam paper, with teachers deciding which questions their students were going to answer. I think every student should be given the whole paper to look at and make their own choice. They do in other exams, don't they? Many lacked experience in working to a brief, and in fact, for some it seemed this was the first time they had ever had to think about client expectations and design processes. The taught course should include client-centred briefs of differing lengths and requirements. Those briefs should cover a range of the specialist pathways too. Many students lacked enough experience in specialist pathways, so much so that one wonders if departments are introducing their learners to the six pathways in the qualification. Look at the specification to check yours. 
learners did not use the 20-hour period to develop their own ideas, but spent far too much time working to a formula, with whole classes doing identical mechanistic exercises rather than individual preparation. There was often a serious lack of a connection between development and final outcomes. With some, it looked as though the exam piece just appeared and could not be related to any of the prep work. There's not much progress between the original spider diagram and the final artwork here. Issues noted by moderators this year included Learners not understanding the scenario Centres could make more use of practice papers use previous exam questions and write their own questions for other units. Learners not reading the questions fully. Centres have not emphasised the idea of working to a client brief and learners are over-rewarded for the most simplistic and superficial of responses. Many learners managed their time ineffectively. Teachers need to give learners more practice at managing their time. It will be a good idea for you to have a further read of the examiner's report now and see how the material we have shown you fits with the comments made. Here you can see another set of bullet points summarising the qualities and characteristics of candidates who have done well in this examined unit. Well worth having a careful read and thinking about your own centre's approach. We should remember that many students in the Level 2 Pass Band, like the one we see here, can gather primary and secondary source material, explore media and processes, and then work towards a solution to the brief. In this case, three circular illustrations on the Wild Wood theme. The assessment criteria, applied properly, produce a mark which, after the awarding meetings, makes the decisions about grade boundaries, shows this learner to be in the Level 2 Pass Band. What a centre cannot do is to decide that, come what may, all their candidates must be level 2 or above, and then award marks that they believe will edge every candidate into the pass band. If the centre marking is adjusted after moderation, disappointment may follow. It's far better to follow the unit guidelines, encourage independence and to be realistic in comparison with the standards of other level 2 qualifications. And, as a further reminder, here's a refresher about the better performing candidates. Again, please have a careful read and think about this list in relation to your own cohort. It would be useful for you to see how the assessment criteria map against some work. So, the next few slides show a set of photos taken by one of this year's moderators. Have a run through the slides. Apply the criteria using the assessment grids, fine-tuning and level guidelines and see what mark you end up with. It's not a test, but a useful exercise to help make sense of the examples and commentary you've seen and heard.
This is the final outcome from this brief, and we hope you have had a go at assessing the evidence, arriving at a mark using the various methods and models we have discussed. The next slides are more general and give you access to further help and support for the delivery of your course. Thank you for your time and involvement today, and we wish you every success.